Hey guys, welcome to the next installment of our Bullhead series. Uh, if you've been following along on uh, previous videos, uh, we left off um, with the movement completely uh, disassembled and uh, we're about to tackle the case components. Um, and I'm gonna share a couple of uh, photos here where you can see there was a, a bit of rust, uh, not much corrosion, uh, very superficial, and you, you can actually see the case components here. Uh, this is post cleaning, uh, but there was some rust on the uh, movement ring spring uh, that was very evident and also along the uh, upper edges of the movement uh, ring. Um, which I was also able to remove, um, but we'll go over that in just a moment. We also had the uh, hands, the minute hand was in pretty good shape, um, but there was some missing paint along one of the outer edges, uh, which at the request of the client, uh, we were asked to touch up. And uh, the hour hand was covered in some sort of uh, greasy black material, not sure exactly what it was, but uh, it had affected the luminous material to the point that it was near liquid and uh, was not salvageable, it needed to be uh, removed and uh, and replaced. Um, but uh, as you'll see in a moment, that hand was actually quite clean and, and complete underneath. Um, had a small bend in one of the edges, but I was able to straighten that out as well. So with everything clean, uh, the movement movement components uh, are are ready to go. They're out of the cleaner now and, and dry. And, uh, and the case components, we can kind of go over those as well. Of course, the mid case here, uh, everything has been uh, thoroughly cleaned uh, and we were able to remove all of the rust that had uh, settled between where the bezel meets the case and, and the, on the underside of the bezel. And of course, uh, you know, it's a good idea to, with a wire brush, uh, clean the threading as well so you can ensure a secure fit when the case back uh, goes back onto the watch. We'll get Nice close-up, you can see this is uh, really nice and, and clean now. Um, the chapter is just a sort of a glossy black and uh, it's nice and clean now too. Uh, there was a little bit of rust along the outer edge of this one as well, but it's it's now nice and clean. And of course the bezel that we talked about pretty in-depthly early on in the first video, uh, you can see what great color there and all the markings are complete. There is some, some visible wear, um, but nothing that would uh, make me hesitate even for a second uh, to not use this bezel. I think it's a great uh, point of, of uh, attraction to this piece. I love that color. Uh, it's going to make for a really nice finish uh, when we get this one done. Uh, the case back, there was very little concern there. The threads are nice and clean now. I'll have a little bit of debris there. I want to go back and touch up in just a, a little bit before we reattach it. But the uh, there are no really no visible uh, tool marks on the case back. A, a couple of maybe very light scratches, uh, one here, and but but nothing that would would be of concern, and uh, nothing that would hinder it from from creating a nice secure fit to the back of the watch. Uh, and I do see uh, at least one. Looks like just one um, previous. Uh, scribing by a, a watchmaker, so it's at least been serviced uh, what looks like at least once in its life, um, but the case back is nice and clean. The movement ring, uh, was I was able to clean in its entirety. Uh, there's no rust, no corrosion there. This is uh, in, in good shape and, of course, worked diligently to uh, clean rust and corrosion from the movement spring, movement ring spring as well, and, and it was definitely salvageable. We'll be reusing the original for sure. Uh, customers opted to go with um, my preference for these bullheads, which is the uh, acrylic clone that I like to use for these. Uh, you know, originally it comes with a mineral crystal, but we use a 340W14GN one-to-one -one acrylic clone. And uh, it really just, there's a lot less glare with acrylic than there than there is with uh, with mineral. You can see it at many more angles and steeper angles. It doesn't throw nearly as much light. It also is a much warmer presentation of the colors of the dial, uh, in my opinion. I always like to use acrylic when I can, and if there's a acrylic option, I'm certainly going to try to use that if it's a high quality item. Uh, we also as we mentioned, we're going to be replacing that crown, uh, what looks to be an aftermarket Pogue crown, 
was what was installed on the watch when it got here. And uh, one of the pushers was missing. I was able to remove this section of pusher that was, here we go, um, that was broken off in one of the pusher tubes. Gasket still attached, but you can really see, uh, let's see if I can get a little closer there. Um, you can really see just how thin um, on the inner portion of that gasket, just how thin the metal is there at the middle of that pusher. So it's not uh, uncommon for me to find those broken or at least very badly bent. Um, but that, that may be the first one that was actually broken off inside of the, of the tube and stuck there. But it came out pretty easily and didn't leave any, any lasting damage. I'll just set that back over there. So we're just going to move forward. Um, also wanted to show you, so this is uh, this, the stem and crown that were attached originally. And I uh, noticed this fat part of the uh, stem here and, and wanted to tell you what, you know, if you've not seen that before, why, why does this look like this? It's not your typical uh, stem that you would see on this model. And the reason is, is because the stem actually looks like it broke um, originally and someone has attached, in addition to the incorrect crown, um, what we call a stem extension. So if we were to unscrew this, uh, this portion of the stem is the short broken end, and then of course the extension screws into the crown like normal, and it has a threaded tube that you can then shorten the broken stem to uh, whatever length you might need and, and finish it there. But we're going to be installing a, a new stem um, along with the new crown so that, you know, we don't have any issues. It, two points of threading there is just one more uh, one more point of possible failure that we don't want to worry about or that coming unscrewed while it's inside of the watch. Uh, so we won't be using, won't be using that. Um, but when we get to the stem and crown part, and we'll show you how to, uh, how that works and and take it from there. All right, I'm going to move these case components out of the way and we'll take a look at some of the moving components and the hands uh, and begin putting this thing back together. As far as the hands, and I've got them just positioned on a balance tool here uh, so you can uh, balance rest so you can see uh, how they came out. Taking a look at the hands, uh, in the previous video, if you'll remember, the hour hand was covered in some sort of uh, black material, looked to be some sort of uh, grease coupled with dirt, and some sort of, uh, I, I'm really not sure, it was a, a liquid material that really wiped clean pretty easily uh, once, we, once I got it removed and, and uh, made any effort at all to clean it. It was not, not a difficult job. However, the luminous material in that window had turned to almost a sludge. Uh, it was a near liquid um, state and could not be salvaged. Uh, my major concern was that it would just fall out of that window and cause you know, more debris, perhaps even some of the debris that was on the dial that we saw before had to do with that hour hand. Uh, but I removed that old luminous material, the sludgy material, and I was able to mix some non-luminous pigments uh, together with some binder to uh, replace the luminous material in the hour hand there so that it pretty, uh, I think it's a pretty close match color-wise to the luminous material in the minute hand. Um, I was very happy with how it came out. Uh, again, there was no missing paint on the hour hand itself, um, maybe a little bit on the back end here, uh, and I was able to clean that off, uh, but fortunately the, the material under the paint on the uh, post end of the hand is, is also black, so not going to have any standout issues there at all. Uh, but I think they match very nicely. There was only a little bit of missing paint on the minute hand, and at the request of the client we were asked to touch that up. I think that also went pretty well. Uh, those look pretty close to stock hands, and uh, they are, of course, correct and genuine uh, for this model, but very happy with how they came out, and I think they're going to be a, a nice point of attention on this, on this watch once it's all put back together. The chronograph hands were in great shape. Here you can see the yellow sweep the color is still a uh, nice, vivid yellow. The gloss finish uh, still catches the light across the top. Um, there are no issues with the 
collet, no separation issues between the two pieces of this suite. Still uh, a nice firm fit and a firm fit to the post as well. Resets to zero. These longer uh, hands for the 6138s are where I typically see separation. If I'm going to see that, uh, where the hand may be loose a bit from the from where it attaches to the collet and can uh, reset by you know up to five or ten seconds in either direction depending on how loose it is but this has survived beautifully uh, we can use it just as is just so it needed a little bit of cleanup and of course the sub register hands uh, they were perfectly fine as well everything there will uh, should be should go back on with with no issues the plates cleaned up beautifully uh, from the cleaner you can see there's no uh, corrosion no areas of concern that i i can see here uh, no plating loss these are in uh, phenomenal shape and as I mentioned uh, previously the only thing stopping this watch from uh, running probably very well uh, was the fact that the cannon pinion had become lodged inside of uh, the hour wheel and uh, was seizing the movement causing it not to be able to run of course that makes uh, perfect sense if, if there was no sliding between those two components then nothing else was going to operate either but uh, after disassembling the movement everything is in great shape and we're just going to go ahead and start getting this back together and see uh, when we get to the hour wheel and cannon pinion I clean them to the best of my ability uh, wire brush them as well so that we could remove any uh, leftover corrosion that might cause them not to be able to slip against each other and I think they're gonna, I think we'll be just fine with the originals and we'll see how it goes when we get to that point. With the center wheel in place and the bridge secure, I like to then go ahead and flip the watch over and do the uh, calendar side first, do all of the calendar side uh, chronograph components and keyless works uh, before then coming back and doing the reverse side. With the uh, calendar plate back in place, just a couple of things to check. And uh, we'll start with the uh, upper reset hammer that uh, resets the 12 hour register up top. And that action is nice and smooth. Uh, of course, uh, we'll also check the quick set um, with the obviously the stem in the second position. And I know that we said we're gonna replace this one, we will, I'm just kind of using it as a placeholder at the moment. But uh, counterclockwise, um, you can see this star wheel here uh, would um, come into contact with an intermediate wheel here that would advance the day disc. And uh, clockwise, it rocks over and would engage with the date wheel on the outside. And that range of motion looks great for both. And as we uh, talked about before, you know, a big concern was whether the uh, cannon pinion would slide smoothly inside of that hour wheel. It's a pretty snug fit, but you can see that's nice and uh, nice and smooth. I have no concerns there. I think it's gonna work just fine. All right. We will now reassemble the reverse side. Again, that center wheel motion looks great.
With the balance reinstalled, things appear to be going right to plan. Next, we'll go back to the other side and install the calendar components, uh, as well as the dial and hands. And uh, then we'll recase it, and I think uh, we'll be just about done. This one was uh, went about as smoothly as you could hope, and uh, I think we're going to be pretty thrilled with the result all the way around. Previously, when we looked at the dial, we could see that there was some dirt and debris uh, that had settled there, and it appeared to me that someone possibly tried to uh, either over-oiled the watch or some other material, uh, but it's possible they actually even tried to insert some oil into the watch through the center hole of the dial, and whatever caused uh, the rusting issues with the cannon pinion and hour wheel, uh, that actually was settled onto the dial as well. I did my very best to clean it, and it is certainly as clean as it's going to get, uh, but if you can see that sort of glossy, uh, almost a liquid appearance on the front of the dial uh, near the near the center there, that's that's not wet or anything, any, any, any residue of any kind left there. That's actually the brown, the glossy brown paint that sits just beneath uh, the finish of the dial. The, it's a, um, like a protective lacquer finish, but it's finished in a sort of a, a textured um, matte uh, that sort of subdues the brown, um, but beneath which is actually just glossy brown paint. So that's actually what you're seeing is the, the paint on top of the dial beneath the finish. And uh, it comes through as sort of a, having a glossy appearance, but I very carefully cleaned um, every bit of the dial. I think the sub-registers look certainly much better, and the overall appearance of the dial uh, has improved greatly. But whatever material was used to, to possibly try to get the watch going again or came through the dial um, from the movement certainly did a number on the, on the center portion of the dial. Uh, but in less harsh light, and I think once we get it uh, cased and through a crystal, I think it's going to face up very nicely. It's going to be a, a beautiful watch. Well, that's it for part three. Uh, we thought this would be the last segment of this series, but we decided to split them into four. So come back next week for the actual final installment where we'll finally finish up with this bullhead. And of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or email us at service at hubcityvintage.com. And if you enjoy our videos, uh, make sure to like and follow. And of course, thanks so much for watching.